Wait a minute. Have you heard the strange tales of the Whistler? with Danny when it happened, but I couldn't hang on to him. He ran off and left me, and I, I've been looking for him ever since. That was Captain Fowler. Something had happened to his friend, Danny. I ain't going to no doctor at this time of the night. Tomorrow, maybe, but I'm not going tonight. That was Danny. Danny knew something had happened to him, but he didn't know what it was. But, Danny, you couldn't have done a thing like that. I know. Don't worry, Danny. That was Faye, Danny's girlfriend. And this is Joe Rodriguez, a fisherman. It's much better that I leave town, Danny. If I stay, I might forget I am your friend. Sunday night, and again, CBS presents The Whistler. I, the whistler, know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. And so I tell you tonight the strange story of Fog. Well, Danny, my boy, this is the thickest fog I've seen in this harbor in many years. Mm-hmm. I've been a sailor man for a long time. Yeah, that's right, Captain. Can't see a single light along the entire waterfront. But we don't need light for where we're going. I know the way to the anchor pool room. Yeah. Yeah, I know too. Hey, uh, Danny. You didn't bring your gun, did you? Sure I did. Why? No, wait a minute. I, I'm not going to let you talk to Duke Moran with a gun in your pocket. Why not, Captain? Well, you... You might lose your temper and do something you'd regret. Oh, what's the matter with your cap? I ain't going to shoot anybody. I just want it in case Duke Moran gets tough. Oh, sure. I know, I know. But if he gets tough, you can handle him with your fists. Sure. Unless he tried to slip a knife through my ribs. Well, Ah, don't worry about the gun, Captain. I won't lose my head. (laughs) So Danny and Captain Fowler continue on their way toward the anchor pool room. Duke Moran's usual hangout, where Danny intends to have a showdown with Moran. But the captain is worried about Danny's gun, for he knows that Danny hates Moran to the core of his being. Now, look, son, I I hate to keep bringing this up, but, you know, I wouldn't go storming up to the Duke and start raising the devil. He borrowed money from me, and he ain't kept his word about paying it back. I know, I know, my boy, but... He'll pay it back. No, no, he won't. He's planning to skip town and leave me holding the sack. Now, look. You're working for me, Danny, and you're my best friend. And I... Well, I'm going along to back up your claims because I was the witness when the loan was made. But look here. I I don't want to see you in no trouble. Oh, I'll take it easy. But I can tell you one thing. Hey, hey look out for that hydra. Uh, oh, oh, look up. Danny. Danny. Danny, you hurt. Here. Here, here, here. Let me help you. No. There. That's it now. Easy does it. Up now. There. There we are. Nasty spill. You just sit here for a bit. Boy, you you took a real header. Huh? How do you feel, Danny? Yeah, better let me see if you cut yourself. Uh, keep your hands off me. Who are you? What? What is this? A, a stick up? Danny. Danny, are you kidding? Go away. Get away or I'll call the cops. Why? But Danny, you're, you're out of your head. Get away. But but don't you know me? Let me alone. Let me alone. Oh, come back here. No, don't go away. Come back. Danny! Danny! <laughs> Danny breaks away and quickly disappears into the fog... For a quarter of an hour, Captain Fowler searches the vicinity and finally hurries on to the anchor pool room. Hey, hey, 
any of you guys here in the pool room seen Danny Price? Oh, hello there, Cap. No, I haven't seen Danny. Neither have I, Cap. I don't think he's been around. Oh, I see. Well, uh, is, is Duke Moran here? The Duke? He was here a minute ago. Where'd he go, George? Out in the alley, I think. Yeah, that's right. Some guy opened the back door and called him. Some guy opened... Oh... Uh-huh. But tell me, tell me, was it Danny? Uh, I don't know. I don't know either, Captain. We didn't pay no attention to who it was. Oh, I see. Well, okay, boys. Thanks. Later that night, groping his way along the waterfront, Captain Fowler arrives at the box office of the Crystal Motion Picture Theater. An attractive girl is selling tickets. Hello, Faye. Well, hello there, Captain. Going to the show? Oh, no, not tonight, Faye. I, I'm looking for Danny. Have you seen him? No, I haven't. And I'm sore at that big lug, too. He promised faithfully he'd be here to take me home, and it's time to close the box office right now. Well, look, Faye, I, I don't want to excite you, but I, I've got to tell you something. Danny's had an accident. An accident? Yeah. He fell down on the street. He tripped over a fire hydrant, and when he got up, you know what happened. He couldn't remember nothing. He was walking around someplace in a daze. Good heavens. Yes, I was with him when it happened, but I, I couldn't hang on to him. He, he ran off and left me, and I, I've been looking for him ever since. Would well, you tell the police? No. Well, for heaven's sake, tell him, Captain. Maybe they can find no, him. No, Faye, I, I don't want to tell the cops... Why not? There's a certain reason, and I don't want to talk about it here. Look, you wait here till I check in the cash. It'll only take a few minutes. I'll be right with you. All right, Faye. All right, Captain, now tell me. Why didn't you notify the police? Because... Because Danny's got a gun on him. Oh. Yes. He was on his way to see Duke Moran. You know about that money. Oh, yes. And he was afraid the Duke might start something. I see. You say you've been looking for Danny? Yes, I've been everywhere. Mm. Been to the casino, over to the bowling alley. Uh, have you been to Fred's Cafe? Well, no. Well, Danny goes there for coffee sometimes. Well, all right. We'll, we'll take a look. Fred's Cafe, why, it's in the next block, ain't it? Yeah. Oh, I tell you, Faye, we've got to find that kid... Well, he's like a crazy man. You know what he did? He looked me right in the face and he didn't know me. Oh, my goodness. Captain, suppose his memory never does come back. Oh, no, 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 Faye, don't, don't carry on like that. And don't you start worrying. Yeah, oh. I know how you feel. You and Danny engaged to be married and all, but don't you worry. I think everything will turn out all right. Oh, I hope so. Hey, wait! Listen. What's your hurry, folks? That's Danny. Well, sure it is. Uh, you going to a fire or something? I've been chasing you for a block. Oh, Danny. Are you, Faye? Oh, Danny, you're all right. Oh, sure. Sure, I'm all right. Except I... Well, I, I'm kind of mixed up. All of a sudden, I'm sitting in the Clark Hotel. And I don't remember going there at all. The Clark Hotel? Yeah. Well, so that's where you've been. Well... Seems to me I was walking along with you, Cap. Of course you were, Danny. Don't you know what happened? You had a lapse of memory. Huh? Yeah. We've been worried to death about you. The captain and I were looking for you. Oh, Danny, I'm so glad you're all right. Oh, so I, I've been off my noggin. <laughs> sure. Don't you remember falling over that fire hydrant? Fire hydrant? Yes, that's what no. did it, Danny. When I helped you up, you, you thought I was a stick-up man. You ran off down the street. Well, I'll be darned. How long ago did this happen, Cap? Well, it's been an hour ago or more. You've been in the Clark Hotel all that time. Well, how should I know? When did you come to your senses, Danny? Well, just now. I'm sitting there in the lobby wondering what it's all about when I've seen you folks passing the window. Oh, swell. But look, Danny boy, you're going to a doctor right away. What do you mean, doctor? Well, your head. You must have struck it when you fell. Oh, my head's all right. Oh, now, please, don't put up an argument, Danny. Oh, now, look. Hey, here comes an ambulance. Maybe I better flag it down and crawl in. Oh, huh? now don't be smart. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's no ambulance. Well, it's a police car. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, come on. Never mind the police car. Danny, come over here under the light. Let me take a look at your head. Oh, now look, Faye. I tell you, there's nothing wrong. Hey, with hey, look. You see where that car's stopping? Huh? Over in front of the anchor pool room. Yeah? 
Well, I wonder what's happened there. Well, I, I don't know. Well, forget it. No, no, no. I, I want to find out what's going on. Yeah, yeah, so do I. Come on, Danny. Let's go over and see. <laughs> All right, all right, you people, get back now. Don't block the doorway. Hey, hey what's happened, officer? The guy's been killed. Shot. Yeah? Yeah. He just found his body out in back of the pool hall. Well, who was he? Do you know? Yeah, Duke Moran. Duke Moran murdered, killed on the very night that you, Danny hatred in your heart and a gun in your pocket were on your way to demand your money. Could it be that after your mind went blank, you continued on to the anchor pool room? Look at your gun, Danny. If no shots have been fired, you're all in the clear. <laughs> Did I kill him? Did I kill him? Did I kill him? <laughs> Come on, Danny, let's go. Well, how do you like that? A guy gets bumped off owing me a hundred bucks. Yep, and you can kiss that dough goodbye. And how? Captain, who do you suppose killed Moran? Well, how should I know? Didn't have any enemies that I know of. Except Danny. What do you mean, except Danny? I wasn't the guy's enemy. I, I just wanted my money back, that's all. Sure, sure, I know. You know what? But you just wanted your money back. What are you getting so excited about? Hey, boys, let's not walk down this way. There's no doctor in this direction. Oh, Faye, will you let up on that doctor thing? I tell you, there's nothing wrong with my head. How do you know? Well, anyhow, I ain't going to no doctor this time of the night. Tomorrow, maybe. My head starts aching or something. Is that a promise? Oh, okay, that's a promise. Hey, uh, Danny. Yeah? You know, I went to that pool hall right after you disappeared. I thought maybe I'd find you there. Yeah? Was I there? No. No, you wasn't. I asked about Moran, and they said he'd just gone out in the alley. Somebody opened the back door and called him. Why, Captain, you must have been there just before the murder. Sure looks like it. I'm sorry now I didn't go out and back and see who Moran was with. It's a shame you didn't. Yeah. Hey, uh, Danny, I, I've been wondering... All right, go ahead and say it. It was me that called him out in the back. It was me that killed him. Why, Danny. Well, that's what he's thinking, Faye. I can see it sticking out all over him. Danny, you mustn't say that. He knows I've been out of my head for an hour. Can't remember a thing, so now he's trying to pin a crime on me. Shut up, you fool. Shut up. Why should I want to pin a crime on you? That's what I'd like to know. What if you did kill Moran? I'm not holding it against you. You couldn't be blamed. You was off your nut. Well, I didn't kill him. How do you know? I didn't. I know I didn't. Yes, but how do you know? Oh, Captain, use your head. Danny lost his memory, and that includes his memory of Moran and his grudge against Moran and everything. Sure. So now what do you got to say? Well, maybe that grudge was in the back of your mind, Danny. Even while your memory wasn't working. Oh, you see, Faye, he's bound to make out I did it. Oh, no such thing. But look here, if you was mixed up in this murder, Danny, it's up to me to help you. I'm your friend. And I've got to find out about it, Danny. Let me see your gun. Huh? Let me see your gun. Now the devil with you. Let him see it, Danny. That'll settle everything. Sure. Sure he can see it. There you are, Captain. Thanks, Danny. Well, yeah. the barrel smells of powder. Are oh, you crazy? And two slugs have been fired, Danny. Look here. All right, so the gun's been fired. And that means I killed Moran, I suppose. You're crazy, I tell you. He's right, Captain. That gun doesn't prove a thing. He might have fired those shots anywhere for no reason at all. Sure, I've been out of my head, ain't I? Don't you worry, Danny boy. You didn't kill Moran. Of course I didn't. You couldn't have done a thing like that. Not even in a trance. So don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. Don't worry, Danny, don't. Poor Faye. She doesn't believe her own brave talk. Deep down in her heart, she's afraid. Afraid that Danny is a killer. It is nearly midnight now. Danny and Captain Fowler have returned to their boat, the fishing boat Dolphin in the harbor. Danny sits on the deck, gazing morosely into the fog. Well, hadn't you better turn in, kid? You ought to get some sleep. Oh, I couldn't sleep. Stick here a minute, will you, Cap? I'd like to talk to you. Well, sure. I'm sorry I blew my top the way I did when we was ashore. Oh, that's all right, Danny. I know you was thinking of my interest when you asked to see the gun. Well, sure I was. All kidding aside, it... Looks pretty much like I bumped off Moran, doesn't it, Cap? Well, Danny, to be honest with you, it does. Still, there's room for doubt. And if I was you, I'd lay low and say nothing. And I know one thing. I could never be convicted of murder, even if I did do it. Why not? 
Because I was suffering from amnesia. Yeah. Trouble is, how are we going to prove that? How are we going to prove it? Well, couldn't you prove it? You was there when it happened. You saw me go slug nutty. Sure, but who's going to believe me? I'm your friend. They think I was lying to save your neck. Yeah. yeah I see what you mean. The things look pretty bad then, don't they? Ah, oh, now look, Danny. Don't go hanging yourself in advance. You know, maybe it's like Faye said. Maybe you just happened to fire them shots. Hey, listen. Hmm? I hear a motorboat. Well, so what? It's coming this way. Hear it? Well... Yeah, sure, sure, I hear it. It's the cops. They're coming here to ask questions. Oh. Uh, I'm getting out of here, Captain. No, 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 you keep your shirt on. I'll hail the boat and find out who it is. Now, you wait right here. Ahoy there! Ahoy! Who is it? It's me. Joe Rodriguez. Oh. Hey, what, well, Danny? It's only Portuguese Joe. What's he doing out here this time of night? Well, I don't know. Here is my line, Captain. You make me fast. I'm coming aboard. Okay, Joe. How'd you know we'd be up this late? Yeah. I just took a chance, Danny. But I am glad you are up. Oh, well, don't tell me you ran out of live bait again. Oh, no. I got plenty of live bait. Oh? Huh? What can we do for you, Joe? Captain, I got a little business proposition I would like to talk over with Danny. And I would like to talk to him private. Private? Oh, now, wait a minute. Anything you got to say to me, you can say in front of the captain. Oh, no, Danny. This is private. Very private. Oh, see, well, that's okay, kid. I, I'll go below. I was about to turn in anyway. Thanks, you, Captain. Oh, don't keep him up too long, Joe. You need some sleep. Uh, I'd just be a few minutes, Captain. Good night. Good night. Well, what's on your mind? Danny, I'm fed up with East Town. Business is rotten here. We want to go to Seattle. Yeah? And I need a little money, Danny. Two hundred dollars. And I want for Joe. You should let me have it. Are you kidding? Ain't you got two hundred dollars? Sure. Sure I have, but I'm getting married in a few days. I need every cent of God. Oh, yeah? The sweet young lady who works at the Crystal Theater, huh? You'll be very happy with her, Danny. <laughs> you bet I will. But you'd be much more happy if you give me the money so I can get out of town, Danny. What do you mean? I am your friend, Danny. And I do not wish to cause you any trouble. But I know something about you that nobody else in this world knows. Not one soul. Yeah? Yeah. Tonight I am in an alley. Behind the anchor pool room. There is much fog. But I can see a little bit because there is a light. I see you shoot to Moran. Twice. To the heart. You're a dirty liar. So, you see, then it's much better I should leave town. If I stay here, I might get drunk someday and forget I am your friend. <laughs> I may talk, Danny. You climb in that boat of yours and get back to shore. Go on or I'll throw you overboard. You come to see me tomorrow, huh? Before noon? If you don't come by noon, well, maybe I get drunk, huh? <laughs> Cap. Cap, you awake? Oh, oh, yes, yes, then. Well, there's no room for doubt now. I'm the guy that did it. What? How do you know? Portuguese Joe was an eyewitness. He was there in the alley, saw the whole thing. Oh, no, no. Wait a oh, minute. That's right, Cap. A dirty rat came out here to blackmail me. Tried to shake me down for 200 bucks. Said I'd have to dig it up by tomorrow noon or he'd start talking. Well, I'll be darned. Kid, kid, I guess it's time we started doing some fast thinking. Now, that ain't necessary, Cap. I'm clearing out tonight. Oh, oh now, wait a minute. Don't get panicky now. Now, let's, let's give it some thought. Oh, no, no, I'm on my way, Cap. No fooling. Well, well, where are you going? I don't know. But I'm going for good. I won't be back. You won't be... Oh, now, look here. What about... What about Faye? What about your wedding? Well, that's just a broken dream, Cap. Oh, Dan. Well, at least you're... You're going to see her before you go, ain't you? No. Well, Danny, what's the matter with you? It ain't fair you to run out on Faye. It's the fairest thing in the world. Why prolong the agony? There's got to be a clean break. Oh, but... But Faye's such a grand kid... And she'll wait for you. Hey, he's loyal. 
Yes, sir, Danny. After this thing blows over, you'll find Fay right here waiting for you. I don't want her to wait for me. And I ain't coming back. Can't you understand that? You think I'd marry Fay now? Me, a killer? Oh, yeah. I know. I but... love that girl. I wouldn't bring disgrace on her. And it would be disgrace even if I cleared myself of the charge. I'd still be a killer. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you would. Well, I guess there's no use talking to you. You won't listen to a word I say. No, Cap. I've made up my mind. I'm going to pack my grip now and go ashore. Mm. <laughs> ah, golly, kid, I sure hate to lose you. Yeah, I, I hate to go, too, Cap. You've been a prince to me. More like a brother than a boss. Well, all I can say is thanks, Danny. Even when you knew I was saving up my money to, to buy a boat of my own, to go into competition with you, you never said a word. Well, why should I? Oh, this is a free country. Every man has a right to advance himself. And uh, about Faye, I wish you'd explain to her. You know what to say. Well, not quite as good as good a talker as you are, Danny, but <laughs> I'll try. You know something, Cap? I wish you and Faye'd get married. I know you'd make her happy. Me and Faye? Oh, no, she wouldn't have me. Don't be too sure about that. She'll forget about me after a while. But explain things to her, will you? Well, okay, Danny. I'll try. I'll do my best. Well, I'm going to hit the first freight train out of town. So long, Captain. What are you doing here? Oh, Danny, I'm so glad I saw you. I was about to get a boat and go out to the Dolphin. Yeah? I've got some wonderful news for you. What? At least I think I have. What caliber is your revolver? Well, it's a thirty-eight. I thought so. Danny, you didn't kill him. You didn't kill Moran. He was shot with a forty-five. Huh? Yeah. I just came from the police hospital. They took the bu- bullets from Moran's body. They were bullets from a forty-five. Oh, no. No, no, that can't be right. It is right, Danny. Oh, there's some mistake, honey. Look. I hadn't figured on telling you this, but there was an eyewitness to the murder. Portuguese Joe, the bait peddler. He's just been out to the boat trying to shake me down for some hush money. Well, he's a liar if he says you did it. Oh, no, honey. You got a bum steer about them bullets. I didn't, I tell you. I got it straight from the doctor. What's more, I've been to the Clark Hotel. The clerk said you were there for practically an hour, sitting by the window. That means you went there right after you left the captain, so you couldn't have been to the pool room. Well, I'll be darned. Now, look, Faye... Suppose you go out to the Dolphin. Here, here, take this grip. Tell the captain what you just told me. And tell him I'm paying a visit to Portuguese Joe right now. Thing settled. Sure, sure. Have you got the money? Joe, you didn't see me shoot Moran. Nah, damn it. I hope you're not going to put up no argument. You lied to me, and I'm here to get the truth. Now, look, Danny. Come on, admit it. You lied to me, didn't you? No. No, you shoot. Let me go. Let me go. I'll choke the living daylight out of you, you rat. Come on. Come on, tell me you lied. I thought so. Oh, let me go now. Sure, I'll let you go. But you're going to come clean. You're going to give me the lowdown on this whole rotten business. Come on now, start talking. The fog has lifted now. And the eastern sky heralds the approach of dawn. 
As Danny returns to the dolphin, he finds Faye standing on the deck. Hey, Danny, I thought you'd never get back. It's almost daylight. Well, I had a long ways to go, honey. Joe lives way out at the end of the Channel Street Wharf. That's where his bait shack is. Well, what'd you find out? Did you face him with his lie? I sure did. Is there the captain in his cabin? No, he's not. He's, uh, gone ashore. Gone ashore? Danny, there's something wrong with the captain. He's been acting very queerly. Yeah? When I told him you'd gone to see Portuguese Joe, his, his face went as white as a sheet. Then he went over to his desk and wrote a note. Sealed it in an envelope and told me to give it to you when you come back. I'll bet I know what's in it. What? A confession. But I won't need it now. I got one from Joe. What do you mean? Honey, the captain's been framing me. Framing you? Yeah, that's right. It's hard to believe, but it's true. Remember he said he didn't go out in back of the pool hall to see who it was that called Moran out in the alley? Yes. Well, he lied. He did go out there. And he saw the murder committed. He knew who did it. Why, Danny. And right then, he got a bright idea. He figured he'd make me believe I committed that murder. So I'd take it on the land. Get out of town. You see, honey? Well, uh, uh, why would he do that? Because he was in love with you. What? Our wedding day was getting closer, and the captain was half crazy with jealousy. He wanted me out of the picture so that he could marry you. Oh, Danny, I can't believe that. It's true, honey. Joe told me. I'd have got a lot more out of Joe, too, only he broke loose from me and dived into the water. Last I seen of him, he was swimming away. Well, what, what about the murder? Did you find out who killed Moran? I got a hunch that Joe himself did it. After he left, I looked around his shack, and I found an I.O.U. there signed by the Duke. You did? Then the Duke owed Portuguese Joe money, too. Yep. And I figured the captain made Joe a proposition. If Joe'd come here and make me believe I was the killer, the captain wouldn't squeal on me. Sure, Danny. That makes sense. Well, I... I'd better see what the captain wrote. Yeah. Open it up, Danny. Uh, dear Danny, I suppose you know everything by now. I haven't got the nerve to face you, kid, so I'll be the one to hit the freight. You won't need to save any more money for that boat. I've signed over the dolphin to you. You'll find the papers in my desk. Good luck, Danny. And make Faye a good husband. <laughs> Yes, the captain was the villain in our story. But wait, what about Danny's gun with the two empty shells? That doesn't fit into our solution at all. Or does it? Remember when the captain and Danny were on their way to the pool hall and Danny stumbled over the hydrant? The fog was pretty thick, you know. The captain didn't have a bit of trouble in slipping that gun out of Danny's pocket. He wanted to make sure Danny didn't use it on Moran. And later, after the captain had formulated his plot against Danny, it was a simple matter for him to fire a couple of shots from the gun and then slip it back into Danny's pocket when he met Faye and Danny on the street. Yes, a fog sometimes has its advantages. <laughs> CBS has presented The Whistler. Original music for this production was composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Tonight's Whistler story was written by Herbert Connor, directed by J. Donald Wilson, and originated from Columbia Square in Hollywood. Next Sunday, same time, 9.15, I, The Whistler, will return to tell you the unusual story of jealousy. Good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>